Hello guys, welcome back! This is Wally, my Bluetooth speaker, and today I will show in great detail how I built it. I had this small solar panel for a while, but I needed a lot more components to make this Bluetooth speaker. Now my orders have finally arrived and I have everything I need to build it. This solar panel is rated at 1.5 watts, so it should be good enough for this project. But let's test it first. These two resistors will represent the load, and I will measure the output power with my simple voltmeter slash ammeter. On my first try I got only 180 milliamps, so I repeated the test several times in June and July, and the maximum I got was 190 milliamps at 5 volts. 0.95 watts it's much lower than the rated value, so what's going on? This is because in my country the elevation of the sun is not 90 degrees. According to an online calculator it's maximum 67 degrees. The sunlight must travel a longer distance through the Earth's atmosphere, so a lot of the radiation will be reflected or absorbed by the atmosphere. But if you live in a country where the sun shines at 90 degrees above you, this solar panel will probably deliver the rated 250 milliamps. We need a solar charger module. This one needs an input voltage between 4.4 and 6 volts. I want some good flat lithium cells for this project. Flat because I want to waste as little space as possible from the interior volume of the speaker box. I recovered them from this thin laptop. It has a broken motherboard, but the battery should still be usable. First I need to dismantle it carefully. I don't want to damage the battery. And here is the battery pack with 3 lithium ion cells. Their initial capacity was 3090 mAh when the cells were new. But now we have a problem. This laptop has not been used for a few years. The cells got discharged to less than 2 volts. So are they still usable? Let's try to revive them and hope they still have some capacity left. I'll use my Opus charger for this job and start with the lowest charging current, 200 mA. But because the cells have a very low voltage, the charging current is even lower. After 15 minutes the charging current gets to 200 mA because the cells voltage is above 2.9 volts. And finally after a few cycles of charging and discharging we can see their real capacity. I'm going to use these two cells with a combined capacity of almost 5500 mAh. The speaker box will be made from this 6mm MDF board. I'll cut the pieces using an electrical jigsaw. Protection goggles are mandatory. And because the MDF dust is very harmful for the lungs, I'll go outside to cut it and I also need a dust mask. After the pieces are cut, all the edges need to be sanded. I'll mark the holes for the speaker drivers, which have the same diameter as the protective grill mesh. I'll use the electrical jigsaw to cut them. One side of the speaker box will include the cutouts for the micro USB charging port, LEDs and two small switches. It took me about one and a half hours to make this panel, using the jigsaw, a power drill and a cutter. And finally after a few hours all the speaker box panels are finished. Now I can start building the box. I'll place each panel in position, make some very thin holes and use tiny screws. But this is just temporary. Practically now I prepare the holes for the screws. They don't need to be very tight. All screw holes are finished. I can dismantle the box now. It seems like a waste of time so far, but this is actually necessary. I'll use this chamfering bit because I don't want to see any screw heads on my speaker. Only the back panel screws are visible, but there is nothing I can do about that. This Bluetooth speaker will have passive radiators, so it needs to be sealed. For this I will apply wood glue on all panel edges. Now you can see the importance of the guidance holes. I can screw the panels together very easily in perfect position. The screws can now be tightened and the excess glue will get on the side. No problemo, just use a paper tissue. Let's see some satisfying footage now. The top cover is glued in position, all the screws will be tightened and the glue is squished to the side, nicely. But what's this? I made an oopsie. We have one millimeter of extra MDF here. It needs to be sanded, give me a second. There we go, I like this material a lot, it's easy to work with. 
We have two more pieces to glue. These are added to protect the solar panel and also for design. I'll place them in position and wipe off the excess glue. I also need to press them with a weight. This beautiful transformer from 1986 Contactoare Buzău factory will do the job very nicely. After a few hours the glue is dried. I can examine the speaker box now. It has sharp edges but don't worry, that's about to be changed. But first I need to cover the screw heads. I've bought this body filler to repair a scratch on the bumper of my car. Now I'm gonna use it on the speaker box. After I add a tiny amount of hardener and mix it, I have maximum 3 minutes to apply it. It hardens very quickly. I don't need to put too much filler, just to cover the holes and try to make it flat. After 20 minutes I can use a sanding block to smooth out the surface. I will insist on these side edges because I want to round them off. And after 1 hour of nail scratching sanding, this is the result. No more sharp corners, everything is smooth. It's ready for painting, so let's take this outside. Now I'm going to spray a coat of primer, so we need protection. But first I have to make the dogs go away. The paint fumes are dangerous for them. Finally I can start painting. After half an hour the primer is dry and I can use a soft sanding sponge to make the surface even smoother. I repeat this process with another coat of primer. And now the first coat of black paint. I will wait 20 minutes for it to dry and then I will apply another coat of paint. And this is the result after 3 coats of black paint and the whole day waiting for it to dry. Very smooth. Ok, stop with the fingering. Next I will solder some wires and use a desk lamp to test the solar panel and charger. The red LED turns on so it's charging now. The solar charging module doesn't have any protection features for the lithium cell. So instead of adding a single cell protection board, I will use a TP4056 charging module with protection. This will charge the battery much faster with one amp, plus it has over discharge protection and other features. I want to test all the components on the bench before installing them in the speaker box. It's easier to detect any problems this way. To increase the variable battery voltage to a stable output, I will use a MT3608 boost converter. I chose it because it works with a very low input voltage starting from 2 volts. Let's set it to 5.1 volts. The Bluetooth module I want to use has the PAM8403 audio amplifier IC, which is powerful, it has an efficiency up to 90%, so it needs very little current. This makes it perfect for a solar powered Bluetooth speaker. I will solder the speaker drivers and test everything. Now I can put them together. I'll start with the protective rings. They will be fixed in position with super glue gel. These are the best 2 inch speaker drivers I've found for this project. They are very powerful for their size, have a rubber surround and are not very expensive. They will also be glued in position. The MDF panel is too thin and may get pierced if I use any screws. Don't worry, this super glue gel is very good. The Bluetooth amplifier board is next. I removed the speaker connector and I replaced the tiny blue LED with a 5mm one to mount it on the front panel. I will use some very strong double sided foam tape to stick the module to the top panel with the antenna towards the front side. Why the top panel? I learned from previous projects that if I place it on the bottom panel in the back of the speaker box, the Bluetooth signal will be decreased by the metal frame of the speaker drivers and other components. So the Bluetooth signal will have a smaller range. Let's solder the speaker driver wires. I soldered some thin wires to the solar panel, they need to deliver maximum 250 milliamps, and the soldering joints are covered with a thin layer of hot glue. Sticky foam tape of course. This will also absorb any small mechanical shock to the solar panel, or in layman's terms if you drop it or hit it by mistake because you are clumsy. 
The solar charging module will also be fixed with sticky foam tape to the top panel. This small rocker switch will disconnect the solar panel because I don't want it to always charge the battery. The ambient light will fluctuate and this may initiate a lot of short charging cycles that in time will decrease the capacity of the battery. The positive wire of the solar panel will go through the switch and the negative wire will be soldered directly to the board. I will seal any existing holes with hot glue because this needs to be a closed enclosure for the passive radiators to work. This small hole is intended for the solar charge LED, but that corner is very crowded, so I will try something different. I will fill it with transparent hot glue and I will extend the glue to cover the tiny LEDs on the board. Now when the LEDs are lit, the light is also visible from the side and I will know the solar charging status. This is a 3mm bicolor LED with a common anode. The positive wire goes in the middle and the negative left and right wires are for the two colors. I will use it to replace the two tiny LEDs from the TP4056 module. It's a beautiful feeling when everything fits together, but for this you need precise measurements and cuts. But what's this component on the lithium cell? I can't find anything about it. Is it a thermal fuse? That would be very nice. The two cells will be fixed together with sticky foam tape. I will place them on the other side of the speaker box. And don't worry about heating them up. The wires are soldered to the nickel strips, not directly to the cells. I will add a small heatsink with thermal glue to the TP4056 integrated circuit. It gets very hot when charging with 1 amp and I don't want to decrease the charging current because the battery has a big capacity. But be careful when placing the heatsink. There are some tiny capacitors on the board near the IC and you don't want to short them. Or to touch the hot glue which I used to seal the hole for the micro USB port. The rest of the wires will be soldered according to this schematic, which you can also find in the video description. And if you want to see updates about my future projects and more DIY videos like my small and powerful Bluetooth speaker, you can check out my Patreon page. This capacitor will be connected to the boost converter output. When the battery gets low and the boost converter struggles to deliver a stable output, the capacitor will help to keep the voltage stable for the Bluetooth module. The wiring is finished. This is how it looks so far. Let's make a quick test. These passive radiators have the same diameter as the speaker drivers. They can be bigger, but they must not be smaller than the active drivers. The center plate is made of metal, so I can use a magnet to hold it. They also have a metal frame, which makes them sturdy and easy to mount, again with super glue gel. I will slowly place it in position, because this must be done well from the first try. This small MDF piece will be used to separate the interior volume for the two audio channels. It has a few cutouts made for the wires. It just needs to be sealed with wood glue. The interior is almost finished. I want to add some acoustic insulation. I will make it from this simple sponge. I just need a box cutter with a good blade. I'll cut a few pieces with a thickness of about 8 mm. The sponge pieces will be glued to the MDF panels using this universal adhesive. You can also use shoe adhesive. Finally the interior is finished. The back panel also needs to be sealed with wood glue. And I can tighten all the screws now. If there is any excess glue, just wipe it off. After the glue dries, you can use a black marker and cover the remaining white glue line. It also needs some self-adhesive rubber pads. And it's finished. But if you want, you can also add the mesh grills. The speaker drivers can be damaged very easily without protection. It weighs 860 grams, that's a little heavier than I expected, but it has a smaller brother if needed. Now we want to see the speaker membrane vibrating, right? 
Let's see it in slow motion. Time to charge it. It's a nice sunny day, so I will turn on the solar charger. You can see the red light. This means the sun is charging my Bluetooth speaker. Very slowly, of course, because it has a big battery. But if you're in a hurry, just plug in a USB charger. Don't close the video yet. In a few seconds, I will show you a real sound test. But first, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it, hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? There's a button right here. Click it and I'll see you soon.